Imagine your everyday life. You wake up from bed, brush your teeth and take your seat on a couch with your most trusted newspaper in hand and a cup of coffee next to you. You read the headline of the day and as you go through your daily dose of politics, innovations and global developments, you come across a word that you've seen repeatedly multiple times. Climate change. In today's video, we will answer the question, are we really winning in the battle against climate change? Now, some of you may be asking, what is climate change or is it even real? Well, let's say you walked outside one day and you got the feeling, man, it's never been this hot before. Well, that's climate change, untimely seasons and an increase in the number of naturally occurring disasters like hurricanes, tsunamis, typhoons, all stem from climate change. As for the reality of climate change, it sure is real. So what have we been doing to combat climate change? Well, we came up with several ideas like the 1992 United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or UNFCC for short, the Kyoto Protocol and the more recent Paris Climate Agreement. Both the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Climate Agreement improved on the UNFCC terms. The Kyoto Protocol was not replaced by the PCA Rather, the PCA acts as a separate instrument under the UNFCC. While the Kyoto Protocol focused more on human sources of emission based on the country's status, the PCA aimed much higher. The PCA aims at limiting the global temperature rise to minus 2 degrees Celsius, but it asks countries to aim higher and limit it to minus 1.5 degrees Celsius. Each country was required to submit a nationally determined contribution. NDCs for short, which is in essence a promise of their course of action till the deadline set by the PCA, which in this case is 2020. The PCA also has a fair share range, which indicates how well a country is doing its part. A total of 192 countries have submitted the first NDCs in 2016, making up 96% of global emissions. Wow! That's a huge portion of the global greenhouse gas emissions. So we are definitely on the right track, right? Wrong. This is the Climate Action Tracker, or CAT for short. The CAT website, which is currently the most reliable and up-to-date source of information regarding each country's progress towards their promises. The CAT uses a scale called the CAT thermometer, which tracks the current temperature rise the color gradings on the scale represent the effectiveness of a country's policy. Gray denotes critically insufficient, red denotes highly insufficient, orange denotes insufficient, lime green denotes 2 degrees Celsius compatible and dark green denotes a role model. Now, let's look at the estimates for global temperature increase by the year 2100. With our current global politics and initiatives, global temperatures are expected to increase by a whopping 3 degrees Celsius. There's a 50% chance of it being lower at plus 2.3 degrees Celsius and an upper bound of plus 4.1 degrees Celsius. To put that into perspective, here are a few images. And if you think, oh, it's 2100, we still have time to fix things. Well, guess what? Wrong again. The world is sinking right now. Jakarta is sinking up to 6.7 inches per year and is said to be completely submerged by 2050. Houston, Texas, 2 inches per year. Venice, Italy, 0.08 inches. Bangkok, Thailand, 1 centimeter per year and is set to sink by 2030. New Orleans, Louisiana, 2 inches per year. And let's not forget about the numerous islands sinking into the ocean at this very moment. In the last year alone, three islands have disappeared near Japan and the Arctic Circle. Now you can ask yourself, wait, the PCA, the Kyoto Protocol and the other initiatives were supposed to solve our issues, so what's going wrong? 
Are human actions not a factor in climate change? Well, here's the thing. The PCA and the Kyoto Protocol were agreements. They do not hold any power over the countries and therein lies the issue. Any country can choose not to fulfill their indices if they so willed it and that's exactly what's happening here. On the 1st of June 2017, the USA announced that they would no longer be part of the PCA despite being the largest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. Canada, who some saw as a symbol of hope in the battle, decided to build a pipeline to increase their fossil fuel output. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says it's all for the environment. Talk about a logical fallacy in real life. Oh, and did I mention that the pipeline runs straight through indigenous property? Of the 192 countries who initially took part in the PCA, only 8 have submitted new NDCs, only 2 have proposed new NDCs, only 7 are willing to follow through with their initial NDCs, and a staggering 172 countries have yet to update their status and targets. At the end of the day, we are only looking at 0.4% of global emissions and 0.5% of the global population being covered by the current batch of NDCs, which is, to put it simply, not enough. The core of the matter is, no country has been able to find a balance between its economic growth and increasing its sustainability. Each respective government is caught in a constant dilemma of whether to focus on the nation's interests or global interests. Some countries have made sustainability their priority, while some others choose to ignore the growing signs of change. The honest efforts of a few nations are negated by the self-centered exploitation of others and honestly, there seems no end in sight to this predicament. Now, I realize all this might make you feel hopeless, dejected and paint a dystopian future in your mind. But what if I told you there is a way? There is a way to save our planet and in turn save ourselves and that is to unite. Put aside our differences, our conflicts, our political rivalries, our greed for wealth and materialistic goods. Put everything aside and focus on one thing, saving our planet. We need to understand that climate change isn't a government's problem. It's your problem and my problem and everyone else's as well. The combined efforts of a majority of the 7 billion people who call this planet a home can save it and ensure that our children also have a chance to call this planet their home. While doing my research for this video, I came across some amazing and informative videos regarding climate change which I will link in the description. Thanks for watching this video. If you did like it, please do like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.